been walking in the footsteps of your father. Ain't no door you wouldn't close to make a dime. You always wanted to be rich like your father. Now you're just like him, you'll only end up doing time. Why you walk here in the footsteps of your father? Towards the penitentiary of my guy. And when there's no more win, we'll find out you've been gambling. With everybody's cash, kid, your ass is doing good. Do love! of my father, how he did all he could to keep a working line. Now I'd be proud to walk the footsteps of my father, but just like him, I ought to make a sentiment. Outside of Paps Lily at the Royal Oaks in Youngstown, Ohio. Uh, right next to me is Mike from the Mutts. They haven't played yet, but I uh, stop by and he's going to talk about what's going on with the Mutts. What's up, Mike? Hey, well, how's it going? Thanks for uh, playing our songs and stuff. Uh, we're on tour right now. This is day four of 25 and our uh, second time at Paps Lily, so we definitely had to route through Youngstown to, to come back. How important is it, if at all, to have an agent? and a label when you want to go take your band on the road on tour? Uh, it's definitely not essential, but it, it for sure helps. We, uh, we've we been booking our own shows for a long time and uh, just recently started working with a small agent out of Madison, Wisconsin. And so we still do a lot of the work ourselves, but it's it's great to have that help. And as far as a label, we've, we've never had one. We've all been uh, in bands that have been signed. and. A label can do a lot for you, but I think that as a band, you really got to take things into your own hands and be be responsible for getting your music out there on your own. Right, and in today's uh, social media era, there's really no excuse for not promoting and utilizing that those medias. For sure, and I think a lot of bands think of it as you know a shameless sort of self promotion, but. In reality, if you're doing what you love to do, you should want to share it with people, and and then seeing people come out to the shows and and give back, like that's that's what's worth it. It's not a shameless self-promotion to try to take this thing that you love and and get it out there into the world. 
So we open up this little segment with uh, your song, Junior. Uh, who was responsible for coming up with the musical idea? And the, the person that wrote the lyrics, was that someone different or was that a lot the same guy? Uh, same guy. I think the way that we wrote a lot of our, our early music is, uh, you know, we would just kind of jam on some different riff ideas that I would come up with or Bob would come up with and uh, then kind of sculpt the songs together when we're, we're in the studio and kind of just book like three or four days in the studio and say, this is it, like whatever we get here, we're going to release. So it puts a little pressure on ourselves to, to, to kind of like just get something done and, and what comes out of those kind of uncomfortable situations is usually pretty fun. Uh, and lyrically, that I write I write all the lyrics. Uh, I went to business school as an accountant for about a year before I quit that. And so Junior is kind of about, you know, sort of the shady things that have been going on in the business world and how a lot of the people that I saw in class seemed like on a path to just repeat the errors that have been uh, done before us and how I kind of had to take a step aside and, you know, following my father's footsteps kind of meant making a path for myself. I listened to uh, an interview with uh, the singer for The National, and uh, I was very intrigued in his process. Um, this was on The Nerdist. There's another podcast, The Nerdist. You should check it out. But he explained that when they write a new album, the guitarist sends him musical ideas via email, like wave tracks, and he just riffs over top of them, and that's how they put together a, a song. Is that? Can you relate to that? I can definitely relate to that. Uh, we, we're on the road a lot, so when we're home, we don't have a ton of time to practice. We couldn't afford a practice space anymore, so it becomes a lot of just we're all working on ideas our, our, on our own, and then we have to kind of put them together uh, when we do get a chance to be in the same room. So. Yeah, I can definitely relate to that. And sometimes it's cool to be in your own headspace thinking about something and, and more like different stuff comes out than you might when you're kind of on the spot with your bandmates in a room. Right on. C can you tell the folks out there listening about uh, where they might be able to find the Mutts playing out somewhere? Yeah, for sure. We're, we're on the road a lot. If you go to uh, wearemutts.com, you can see our, our schedule. Uh, after this, we're headed through Pennsylvania to New York and then down to Nashville. And we're based in Chicago, so we play in the Midwest a lot. Nice. Okay. Are you familiar with uh, Day Trotter in Rock Island? Oh, yeah. We got to play at Day Trotter uh, last year. Our no way. So, oh, my God. Well, the first thing I'm going to do when I go home tonight is check out the Mutt's Day Trotter session. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was right when we finished our acoustic album, so we kind of did some of the uh, electric stuff and a couple of acoustic. So it's a good mix of, of all the things that we do. Did you get to meet Sean? Did not. He was not there. We, oh, bummer. We've conversed a few times on the phone and email, but he wasn't there that day. So, But we, we hung out with Mike, the engineer. He's a great, great dude. So, um, If you get a chance, it would tickle my feathers if you listen to my interview with Sean Moeller. I, I got him okay. in Austin. It was a very interesting conversation. Yeah, Sweet. I would love to check that out. I yeah, I'm so glad to run into somebody because uh, some of the folks locally, you say day trotter, and they're sort of, they don't really know what that is, and it's always refreshing to meet someone that's hip to it. It's still kind of underground. They, they're getting big and bigger like huge bands now but uh it's still it's still sort of an underground thing and i think that's keeping it cool and they're just getting bands in there that they like to hear so it was cool to be a part of that right on i gotta check that out you can go to daytrotter.com or download the daytrotter app to hear the mutts on daytrotter so closing this thing out tell folks where they can go to buy your merchandise get connected with you on twitter etc cetera, etc cetera. well i think the the first place to go is free.muttsmusic.com it's a sampler 13 songs and then on that same website you can get the cds and the vinyl and the downloads and stuff like that Viking Jim of the Homegrown Show, CD 93.3, is a big fan of the Mutts. That's how I got turned on to Junior and you guys. So we got to send a shout-out to Viking Jim and tell him to keep on keeping on. Thank you so much.